For the Debonair Ideal segment on Ashtrays, interview Jack Taranio of Roberto P. Duran Cigars and tell you what we've been smoking in our Stogies of the Week. So stay tuned. Broadcasting live from G-Unit Studios in Rhode Island, it's the Stogie Geek Show. This segment is brought to you by Saga Cigars, makers of the Saga Golden Age. The Golden Age is a cigar that takes you back to the classic days of cigar smoking. Through six generations of experience by the Reyes family, the Saga Golden Age delivers a timeless blend that uses the nobility of the tobacco to bring you a perfect balance of power and flavor. It narrates better than words the history of a family's tradition in tobacco, delivering a cigar much like the ones they used to smoke in the times of Hemingway. Saga Golden Age is a full-bodied, full-flavored Dominican Puro. With tobacco from one farm, the blend features a Corojo 2006 wrapper and filler from original Cuban seeds grown in the Dominican Republic. Available in four sizes at an affordable price, the Saga Golden Age is sure to please and take you back on a journey to yesteryear. And by A.J. Fernandez, cigar connoisseurs are already raving about this exquisite cigar, which pays homage to Christopher Columbus's discovery of tobacco in his expedition of the New World. The New World cigar is a medium to full-bodied cigar show that shows off the kind of exquisite construction expected by master blender A.J. Fernandez. This gorgeous box press cigar features a delicious dark chocolate Nicaraguan wrapper that houses a blend of Ometepe, Condega, and Esteli filler that is bound with a Jalapa binder. Once lit, the perfectly balanced and refined New World gives off a beautiful billow of smoke and hits you immediately with spice and citrus. As you begin to lose yourself in the rich aromas of the New World, the flavors become more complex complex and begin to express hints of hazelnut and coffee. New World is a first-time collaboration between AJ and his father Ismael, which really makes this cigar stand out in the AJ Fernandez line. To commemorate the union of father and son, AJ is offering you this masterpiece at around an MSRP of $6, unheard of for a cigar of this caliber. AJ Fernandez invites you to embark on the journey and smoke what he guarantees to be one of the most talked about cigars of the year, the New World Cigar Journal's number one cigar of the year. Welcome, everyone, to the Stogie Geek Show. I'm your host, Paul Asadorian, even. You got me drinking so much rum, I can't say my own name, Apollo. (laughs) Apollo joins us in studio. Welcome, Apollo. Thank you for having me. Apollo has brought not Cuban cigars and not Cuban rum. um, And he's got me kind of silly, Will. Will's on the lines via Skype from North Carolina. How are you, Will? Hey, greetings, everybody. Yes, very excited about this show. Uh, Will, do we have a cigar? I don't think we had a cigar for the week for this week, right? Um, well, I, you know, we're going to have Duran on it. So. Okay, so after this, yeah. I'll go grab one, yep. of, one of their cigars. Yep. Um, and um, so, but right now, I'm, I'm finishing off a not Cuban H. Upman Magnum 46, which is very, very tasty. I know, Will, you're very fond of this cigar as well. Great, great cigar. I mean, landmark cigar in my book. Yeah, and I haven't smoked maybe but one of these before, so uh, I had an opportunity to get a hold of some, and uh, I have to say, I love this size. The 46 ring gauge is just, it does really nice for this size. Oh, I totally agree. I mean, Mark Jr. actually gifted me one of the old ones, um, which was, you know, had the old bands on it, and I smoked it with him last time I was up there, and it was, it was just an unbelievable smoke. So, Will, have you lit up a cigar for this show yet? I'm about to light up the Roberto P. Duran uh, premium cigar. Okay. So and that is, looks like uh, the Toro size? That is actually or the, the 60. Gordo size. The this 60, the 60. Yeah. Yep, this is the 60. Um, I went big tonight. Nice. nice. I've been on a little bit of a 60 kick lately. I don't know what it is, but I've, I've had some very good ones. And actually, the Duran is a very good cigar in the 60. I will, Interesting. I will say that. Yeah. And now, Paul, what did you you lit up a uh, Juan Lopez? This is a non-Cuban, non-Cuban Juan Lopez Selection Number Two. Number Two. Non-Cuban. Yeah, and you said you like this one a little better, actually. Well, that's the funny thing too. So again, my background is you know I'm really big into cocktails. Mm. I got into cigars, I'd say about eight years ago. Um, you know, I tried all the big brands. You know, my it's I, I feel bad saying it, but I kind of feel proud about it too. My favorite cigars are the uh, Romeo and Julietas because they're more of a medium cigar. Right. Um, I've tried some of the major brands we get from you know Dominican Republic, etc. Uh, H. Upman's, Cohibas, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You know, I. Sorry, that's just the producers talking in your head. Okay, Anyways, keep going. Voices in my head. <laughs> the voice that literally. I didn't think I drank that much rum. Damn. <laughs> 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 Anyways, the point is, you know, I've had some of the major brands, mm-hmm. 
And, you know, honestly, I always kind of go back to the more medium cigars, which to me, as, again, a novice cigar uh, smoker, it feels kind of weird to say that, but um, I'm still kind of proud of that because I still enjoy cigars. But I don't necessarily enjoy... I, I've had some of the C, CAOs. They're, yeah. CEO actually makes some good ones, and one of the pairings I had was actually with beer. Yeah. And it was a It was a Connecticut shade CAO with a, a, a light... Um, it was almost like an IPA beer. Yeah. I did it on the show. I don't remember the exact pairing. I can Dude, that, it was yeah. awesome. It was awesome. I would have never thought to pair a Connecticut shade cigar with an, an IPA or a, that kind of beer. It was awesome. Well, that gets back to what we're doing right now. You know, you should really, if you have the chance to in your lifetime, pair a non-Cuban cigar with a non-Cuban rum. It's unreal. Yes, yes. It's, it's the best. Um, but yeah, so now, the, no, the, well, we have the non-Cuban Cuban the, rum. Uh, yeah, the non- The, the, ha- the Havana non, Club, the very non, good with a cigar. The non-Cuban Havana Club, uh, triple barrel aged. It's so good. And now you mixed up some mojitos. Yes. And mine is with that old monk rum. And I will. I have to tell you, I, if ever I've had a mojito that pairs well with a cigar, it's this rum. It is just absolutely fantastic. Dark rum. It dar- it's a dark rum. It's very, very smooth. I found that the one you made with the lighter rum, with the Bacardi. The Bacardi light, yes. The Bacardi kind of, it's a more sharp and overpowers your palate, I mm. find. I find the darker rum pairs way better with cigars, which most of our listeners, I think, have experienced if you've ever experimented with pairings like that. Um, the, you know the dark room is, but I tell you what, that mo- this mojito is awesome. awesome. And it's not too it's not too sweet in terms of the cigar. You don't find that the mojito is kind of uh, overbearing the cigar a bit. So when Apollo made them, go ahead. Um, yeah, Apollo made them. He made one that was this one is not too sweet, and he made another one that was really sweet. And he said it's really left up to the bartender uh, how sweet they make the mojito. Will and he said in most establishments. The bartenders tend to make them really sweet. Well, that's the thing, too, is, you know, mojito is generally a very accessible cocktail for the clientele. It's, uh, you know, w- what's in it? You know, rum, mint, a little bit of lime, and simple syrup. So if you want to make it a more accessible drink, you make it very sweet. Right. Um, the one I made for you, again, you saw just a little spritz. Little it was. It was just like a splash of agave squirt. nectar. That's it. In your cocktail. Yeah, it was good. Um, but yeah, so I made this one right here, which is uh, overly sweet. Yeah. It depends what you're looking for. And that one I found, Will, exactly what you said. It overpower- The sweetness kind of overpowers your palate. You still there, Will? I'm here. Oh, yep. okay. Um, yep. But yeah, so I like I like the mojito as a cocktail because it lets you put in any style of rum. Mm. You know, you can do the white rum, the brown rum, and the black rum. This we use the old monk black rum. Um, but you, the mint and the lime will never overpower it. Yeah, it accentuates it. Um, but yeah, you can go over. You can wait. You can do way too sweet. Most bartenders do way too sweet. Yeah. But if you do just a little splash of it, it's nice and uh, it pairs really it. well. So I'm interested in that. I'm actually that actually has me very intrigued because I wouldn't if. You know that 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 would have me interested. The cigar enthusiast with that. Yeah, yeah, it definitely pairs very well. Um, okay, so we're gonna dive into our debonair ideal. Um, we're gonna talk about ashtrays. So Frank, if you could gather up all the ashtrays in the studio so that we can talk about them while we play the debonair commercial, we're gonna cut to the debonair commercial. We're gonna do a debonair ideal segment on ashtrays. Like a circle in a spiral Like a wheel within a wheel Never ending or beginning Like the circles that you find In the windmills of your This segment is, of course, brought to you by Debonair Cigars. Visit stogiegeeks.com forward slash debonair for a list of retailers who carry debonair. Buy some today and get a little more debonair. So uh, just we're rounding up some of the ashtrays to show you uh, here in the studio because we're going to talk about ashtrays in this debonair ideal segment. Will, this is probably our first installment about ashtrays. I think that there's at least uh, two or three more segments we could do on this. 
Yeah, you know, it's funny. We've done a bunch of accessories, and we really, when we were talking in our early in the week, we really hadn't done anything on ashtrays. So um, I agree. There's a lot of different types of ashtrays that we can go down with this. Yeah. So I'm going to focus uh, this segment, Will, on some of the ashtrays we have here in studio, some of my likes and dislikes, and some debonair things that you can do with ashtrays. I think that uh, if I were to relate it to something debonair, it's to make sure you empty your ashtray regularly. Like, there's nothing more, like, visually unappealing and kind of smelly about an ashtray that's full of cigar butts. Like, they tend to smell really bad. So make sure you empty often uh, when you do that. Now, what's interesting is you can have a really, really good, nice ashtray, an expensive ashtray. This one's actually Waterford Crystal. Uh, or as we say here in New England, it's Waterford. It's Waterford. Waterford, Waterford. It's Havid, Havid, Waterford Crystal. Waterford. Uh, it's very heavy, very dense. I like that about it. But this one is an, an older style. It was actually my grandmother's. Uh, oh, wow. And when she passed away, there was some, you know, Waterford Crystal in her collection that um, was, it was kind enough to pass down to the grandkids. And um, so this was her ashtray. And uh, since it's kind of, you know, an older style, it's, it's a cigarette ashtray. You can see that the, the grooves in it, uh, I don't know if you can see the grooves, but the grooves are very small, um, really meant for cigarettes, not so much cigars. And I, I, I mean, I still use it because I think this particular one looks very nice and very classy. Um, but I find that other ones that are more cigarette style ashtrays aren't very debonair to use for cigars. This is the one I make a rare exception for just because it's so, it's so nice looking. It's pretty classy looking. And it's very, very, very heavy, uh, which is nice. Cigars aren't falling everywhere. Um, we'll go to the total the opposite end of the spectrum. Um, <laughs> and this is the spectrum that you have when you talk about ashtrays is you can go to something that's just purely functional, right? I mean, there's nothing visually debonair about this ashtray will. But it's very functional. I can clip it anywhere and it holds my cigar. This is actually the ashtray that we have in the bathroom. Yes, we have an ashtray in the bathroom. This is the one that we keep in the bathroom. We are our 100% smoking studio. At that's Story. right. One Everywhere yeah. you can smoke, it doesn't matter. Right. It's very smoker right. friendly. Um, so, Will, I don't know if you have any of these kind of clip on ashtrays. You keep one of these in the car? I don't, you know, but you know, I don't have one of those. I didn't know what it was until I looked closer. But they're handy. They can be handy, especially, you know, I see the golfers use those a lot. Yeah, you're golfing yeah. or you're fishing. Those are really popular. Um, another kind of travel style ashtray, uh, this is from uh, Tommy Bahama, uh, who makes actually a lot of cigar-related products come from Tommy Bahama, and they're all pretty nice. This one's really classy. This is like a travel one. So it folds up into a nice box. It looks kind of nice. Uh, and then it opens up, and it gives you, like, a little holder for your cigar. And it came with a cutter and a punch. Yeah, I think a cutter and a punch um, and, you know, a little holder for your cigar. This is actually the one that I keep at my desk. Um, it's probably kind of small for the one that I keep at my desk, um, but it also doesn't take up a lot of space. Um, but this one's pretty classic. This was made for, like, your golfing thing, Will, I think. Yeah. So you'd kind of put this in your golf bag, right? Uh, and you have your cutter, maybe a lighter all inside this little box, so maybe when you're done with your golfing, you want to sit around and have a cigar, you can open it up and cut and light your cigars and have a little nice little ashtray. So I thought this was pretty classy and very uh, debonair. Very, yeah, it's very nice. And again, for Father's Day coming up, Tommy Bahama, my wife always gets me wonderful gifts from Tommy Bahama that are all cigar-themed. I've gotten travel ashtrays in my car, uh, which is the can. They make one of those. She's giving me T-shirts from Tommy Bahama, which are really nice and have, like, cigar logos on them and stuff. So um, sometimes I get uh, ashtrays when I travel. And this one, uh, my wife and I actually went to uh, New Orleans. Uh, we went to Bourbon Street. And um, we went and visited all different spots in New Orleans. Uh, and this is what I found there. Uh, and this one's kind of nice because it's a longer ashtray, nice to hold your cigar. Uh, it kind of reminds me of where I traveled. Uh, now, to speak about the, this style or material of ashtray, you know, the ones I showed you before are really heavy crystal, plastic. That one has metal and wood. These are porcelain. They're the same material that they make your toilets out of. And porcelain is very much like glass. So if you bump it or drop it or uh, whatever, it, it's going to shatter into a million pieces, much like glass would. So be very careful with these. Um, this style you can also find as like giveaways. Like you were saying, Will, I think before when we were talking about this segment, that you very rarely pay for an ashtray. You mostly get them for giveaways, and they're mostly porcelain, <laughs> right? Yep. 
this one was a freebie uh, that someone had given me, and it is of that porcelain style. Now, this one seems pretty solid, but a lot of them are rounded and hollow. So if you just touch it against something, like the porcelain will just kind of break in, and it'll be mm. a big hole in the side of your ashtray. Or God forbid you drop it. Like, forget it. It's shattering into a million pieces. But those are almost always free um, and, and nice to keep around because, you know, they are free. So yep. thanks for yep. Well, I don't know if you had any uh, uh, thought, other thoughts on kind of ashtrays. Those are just some of the ones that we have here in the studio. They're very functional. They're not, you know, luxury items. Uh, the Waterford Crystal one's probably a really expensive one. But uh, other than that, they're kind of just your basic ashtrays. Yeah, so, you know, there's a couple of other tips that you could do is, you know, adapt the ashtray to your situation. Um, so what I mean by that is if you're in the garage, um, like I am a lot, don't take that water for crystal ashtray. It's oh, the, it, yeah. it, it, it is going to break. Frank, I can had, you bring I me had, that other one? Yeah. Hold, yeah. yeah. So speaking of uh, more resilient ones, we do have this other one. Like, this is the one you want to use in your garage. I don't know. Does this even fit on camera? Yeah. This is the – there we go. This is the stinky, <laughs> right? They are great ashtrays. Great ashtrays. They call this one the big stinky, and it comes with its own stand. So this is actually in the guest area of the studio for guests to come in and smoke. This is what we keep between the big comfy chairs. And these are great for your garage setting. You get that comfy seat outside. You put this right next to it, and it's at the perfect height. And it's just awesome. This wasn't overly expensive. It was like 40 bucks or something like that. Um, I love this ashtray. Great. Great choice. So good, I have good to ask a well. really stupid question. How about plastic ashtrays? Great question. So I talked last week. I bought a My Father gift set of cigars, and it came with an ashtray. And I was like, I really need an ashtray for outside. I'm like, and all my ashtrays are at the studio. So, and the ashtray was plastic. It's actually a thick, heavy plastic. I'm like, yeah. it's perfect for outside. Because if it falls on my deck, it's not going to shatter. And it's probably not even going to get damaged because I had like, the deck is either wood or composite. So mm -hmm. it's, it's perfect for outside. Perfect. See, I really like that a lot too because every ashtray has its own environment. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yep. Now that's kind of yeah. what Will was saying too. Yeah. And, you know, melamine, mel melamine, am I saying that Melamine, right? yeah. No, I mean that's a great ashtray because it's durable, um, and it's gonna hold. It's gonna hold nicely, and it, you know, it, it, so it's a little more durable than, than a plastic ashtray. Uh, what I was saying is, you know, with the, with those crystal ashtrays, and I, I had a couple of those nice Gurkha ones. Mm. They break. They will break. You, it, you, it's a, it's a matter of time. Oh, like this one. This one's a hammer and sickle. The, oh, that that one. I have one of those too, and I said I am not putting that in yeah. the garage. Yeah, because if this falls on concrete, it's at least going to chip. But this is another one that we keep in studio on set because it's so nice. It was very nice of Hammer and Sickle to send us the, the ashtray. But this is one we keep, you know, keep on set you know, between uh, the guests and stuff. So it is yeah, nice. it's a true cigar ashtray. It's very nice. Yeah, you know, I'm using a very cheap dish ashtray here. I don't know if you guys can see on the camera right now. Mm -hmm. You hold up a little higher. Yeah. There you go. And I have this big 60 rain gauge cigar. Absolutely what you shouldn't be doing. Yeah. <laughs> it's, just, it's just I, it's just I, am disor I was disorganized tonight. But, uh, you know, I do use these small ones if I'm, like, outside or whatever. And I don't, it's, a, it's, a, it's a ceramic one. I don't care if it breaks. It was really cheap. Um, I've seen the, um, the little stinkies, Will. Yeah, they, they're tabletop ones. Yeah, tabletop. They're, like, miniature versions. And th those are nice because <clears throat> you can put any size cigar on the, the little holders. And it holds them pretty well. The thing with the stinkies, though is when they fall, because it will fall. And I've been lucky with that other one. But when they fall, they'll typically fall in that little uh, silver metal piece that holds your cigar. And if it falls in that metal piece, that metal piece will break off. Yep, and it, yep, that's, I agree. And then you got to get the torch out and weld it back on. You, know? you don't want to get broken off unexpectedly. No, it's very yep. bad. It's very bad um, no. when that happens. The, the other thing I advise having, and this is going to be a real weird thing, uh, is a paintbrush. And you may say, why are you going to have a paintbrush in your ashtray? You take that paintbrush and you brush the ashes out and it gets it nice and clean. Nice, nice. You don't need to idea. do anything more than that. Just get a paintbrush. It will, it will, you'll, you can just do it on the grass or whatever and, and you're done. You put that ashtray away. Yeah. Yeah, you so, don't want to use any kind of cleaning chemicals on your ashtray for sure. No, and, no and Windex. Use, none no of that. No Windex. Uh, even when you start getting with paper towels and stuff, it's, it gets all dirty. You're going to get all dirty and everything. But clean your ashtray, as Paul said. It's very debonair to do that. Absolutely. So I think that's more of like a functional ashtray, debonair ideal segment. When I started looking at the ashtray options that were out there, there's ashtrays of all different shapes, sizes, price points. You can buy 
125 ashtrays with your logo on it for like $2,000. You can buy ashtrays that look like a hand. You can buy uh, just the options are endless. So uh, I definitely want to cover uh, ashtrays more in some future segments. But I think this is a great introduction to uh, kind of the more functional ashtrays that, that we're using and some of the different options that are out there. Yep, I agree. I'll say when I go to a nice uh, cigar bar, one of the things I'm most impressed by is seeing a clean ashtray. Yes. You know, if I can go there, you know, preferably if it's earlier on in the night, you know, 8 o'clock, 9 mm -hmm. p.m. kind of thing, and the ashtrays are clean, that to me is you're taking the time and respect for your customers to really present yourself well. Yep. Yeah, I know next door, I mean, they're, they're always, like, cleaning out the ashtrays. Yeah. It's like I'll go in there and I'll like ash in the ashtray and then I'll go in there a little while later and it's gone. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> like that just shows attention to detail. At yeah. a good cigar bar or cigar shop too, you know, that attention to detail, it's it's, it's like it's like a fine dining experience. Right. You know, do you want to sit there with your meal and have all the food and the dirty plates everywhere? No, yeah. you want to have a nice clean experience. Yep, absolutely. Well, that's our debonair ideal segment for this episode. Stay tuned. We'll be right back with our special guest, Jack Tarano.